Hi everyone. Um, hoping you can see my screen. Yes, we can. Oh, cool stuff. Okay. Let me. What? Let me make view to be limited. So that okay. Okay, so um, for participants, if, there's, if you have any questions or anything that you'd want to add, please feel free to put them on the chat. And then as we go, we can, um, we can, um, we can pick them up and just uh, discuss them. Uh, but otherwise, um, I'm just waiting for the go ahead and then we can start this exciting session. You're good to go. You can start. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. Okay, um, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Eunice, uh, Eunice Kilonzo. I am joining you all from Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, it's a Friday evening, it's been a long week, uh, but uh, I was super looking forward to this session. So I'm hoping that we can all learn from each other. Um, uh, you know, um, I know um, I don't have the monopoly of knowledge around storytelling. But I'm happy to share the lessons that I've gathered over the years. I've been doing storytelling for a long time. <laughs> uh, I think I've been I've been telling stories for the past give or take maybe 20 years. Well, I'm just 33, so uh, just in case you think I'm like 40 or 50, I'm just 33. So I've been telling stories for a while, and so these are some of the lessons I've picked along the way uh, in formal uh, formal setups and also in informal settings as well. And so I hope that we can all learn from each other. So our session today is really about uh, storytelling. And we know when you think about storytelling, you think about once upon a time, uh, but now it's for comms peeps. But if, even if you're not a comms person, um, this is still, it's, it's, it's also an opportunity for you to learn. If you're thinking of transitioning, I know I've gotten questions from people who are in either media or in other sectors and they're thinking of moving into comms and they're they are not sure where to start. Storytelling is that place you, you, you can start from. So I think that's, um, uh, that we can start from there. So uh, feel free, again, if you have any questions, if you have any feedback, uh, if you need to tweet me or something, I won't, I won't look at your tweets right now, but uh, I'll, I'll review after. I, I am on Twitter as Eunice K. Kilonzo, so my name over here, but then there's, a, there's an extra K for my middle name, so Eunice K. Kilonzo on all platforms. Uh, feel free to share uh, nuggets, pointers, questions, etc. that you might have. Okay, so I'll go straight ahead into um, storytelling. Okay, how... Let me see. So, um, as I said, I don't have monopoly over, over knowledge around stories, but I know we all know that stories are everywhere. I mean, the things that you've bought, uh, the, the, you know, the kinds of, of um, the way you describe yourself really is about stories. Uh, you know, the schools that you went to, the courses that you took, everything really at the heart of it is about stories. And for me, whenever, whenever people are asking me, so you need, how do I find stories? Where do I find stories? I always say, you all have stories within you. It starts from within and then it goes out. So as, as comms people, um, you know, our work is about communicating. Our work is about sharing. It's about inspiring. It's about, you know, moving people to change it, you see. And so whatever it is that you're doing, you could be in engineering, uh, comms, whatever the field that you're in, there are stories there. And outside of that setup that you're in, there are stories across the world. And you'll see, uh, you'll see this uh, as I go on with my presentation. Ooh, what did I do? Sorry, user experience. Uh -huh. Just one second. Okay. So the purpose of stories, uh, and I know this is very, uh, we see this a lot, uh, you know, when people are saying the purpose of this presentation is, uh, and, and really the purpose of stories, you don't tell stories just because, we tell them because we want to either inform people, so you want to inform people about the, your brand, about the products that you, you want to sell, about the impact that you're having in community, you want to influence people. 
influence is a big deal in communications because otherwise why are you doing what you're doing so uh, you want to make someone shift from uh, you know doing something and influencing them to start thinking about issues differently you want to engage people you want to engage your audience you want to engage your market you want to raise awareness uh, you know raising awareness around say the covid vaccine um, you know you want to raise awareness about monkeypox you want to raise awareness about uh, some real estate development you these these are these are pop that's why you want to do what you're doing you want to inspire you know the story that you read and you uh, you know something like um uh, kabilam uh, you know the the tiktok sensation guy um he inspires us he doesn't say a single word but he inspires us with his stories and the stories of you know tongue-in-cheek kind of thing he, he he states the obvious without saying a single word so he inspires those of us who want to tell stories and say are we talking too much? Are we sharing too much? While well, we could learn from him, he doesn't even speak, but he he actually inspires a whole generation. He has millions of followers. I mean, the most followed person on TikTok right now. And of course, also storytelling is about challenging people. You want people to start thinking about issues differently. Uh, you know, we've had the Syria war going on for years on end, but. Over time, I feel that, you know, the world has become desensitized around it. But there are stories that can be told that can challenge us, not to forget that there are children, there are communities, there are people who still are going through a war that is still there, and we need to do something about it. And, and the organizations that are doing amazing storytelling around some of this work. So in a nutshell, you know, and these are some of the questions people, as comms people, as media people, as people who work around content, I always ask, what, what is the purpose of this? So mostly it's around these six areas. These are some of these areas that people focus a lot. But more, even more simply is that stories change the way your audience thinks, feels, and acts. This is really important, you know. Uh, again, it talks about the influence. It talks about, you know, the way your audience thinks, feels, and acts. And the acting bit is where it's really critical because you're moving someone to action, what we call call to action. You've called them to action and now they're moving, you know, you've nudged them to do something. And in thinking, uh, given the work that you're doing, it could be political communication. You have a candidate who wants to get, uh, you know, a, a seat. And I know Nigeria is preparing for elections. We just came out of, of, of an election your stories can change what your audience thinks, feels, and acts. Uh, I'll give an example. In, in Kenya, the presidential uh, candidates, I mean, they, they had each had a different story. One would tell you, I'm a hustler. Uh, you know, I'm here for, for the hustlers, etc. Another one will tell you, I've, I've, you know, I've been fighting for the liberation of this country over X number of years. Another one will tell you, I'm coming in because of my out of the box kind of thinking and and weed and and you know all these animals that we can sell over i mean everybody has a different story and when you listen to all these presidential candidates They start making you think about weed, for instance, that we can sell weed. One of the Kenyan presidential candidates was saying, if we sell weed, we can pay off all our debts. I mean, it makes you think different because you're like, hmm, if we can pay off our debts, that's not a bad idea. It makes you feel differently. And it makes the people who had the most outrageous of stories, they got voters because they had people thinking, feeling differently. Um, and, and, and this... For, for us as storytellers, you need, whenever you're setting out, you know, having been informed by your purpose, why you're doing what you're doing, you need to ask yourself, what do you want your audience to think, feel, and act? And I'll show you interesting stories of how people are actually doing it. Uh, organizations in Kenya, uh, in Africa, and beyond, how they, they actually make this seamless. Okay. And so uh, the first, the first uh, story I want us to watch, and I want us to, to have the three things in mind. This, um, okay. Let, let me know if you can hear the beginning. Someone please confirm that uh, 
you can see the the, the youtube video or oh, hearing but it's breaking okay ah you can you can also see it okay or oh, you can't see uh-huh hmm so strange you can't I'll, I'll pause it now just a minute was born with hyperandrogenous. Like the others, she was simply born this way. World athletics doesn't consider her a woman that she can't compete. Unless she constantly takes hormone drugs to suppress her testosterone output. Lex believes that women should not be judged for how they look. That no woman should ever be stripped of being a woman. Okay, um, so that is the video that I wanted us to watch. Um, I'll also paste it on the chat so that uh, you can always go back to it. Uh, so I'll be doing that for all the videos. There are a couple of videos. So I'll just put it up on the chat. Um, yes, I will do that, uh, Paris. I'll, I'll paste it here so you can watch it afterwards. Um, yeah. So uh, let me also allow me to just also increase my volume, I think, just in case um, might help. So for those who are able to watch or at least follow the video uh, through the captions, if you didn't hear it very well, what did this video make you feel? You know, uh, it's about Casta Semenya. We've all heard about her. We've all, you know, and, and her story and this video in particular brings to the fore very critical discussions, you know, who, what makes a woman a woman? Uh, you know, <clears throat> how do you, uh, what does it mean then for someone like Asta Semenya who was born this way, she didn't, she didn't change anything about herself, but then we, we don't know her or we, we don't give her the opportunity to be her true self. So put it on the chat uh, and I just, just share what you think about that. And then I want us to think about, did it make you think, feel and act differently? Uh, for, you know, having watched this and what you thought you knew about Kaste Semenya and then having watched how the story was told, uh, how it, her, her experience was shared, <clears throat> did, did it make you think? feel and act any different anyone with feedback um so i see udma thank you for joining us uh welcome uh please put your thoughts did that video uh Casta Semenya's video make you think and feel and act differently we'll proceed but then we can go back to the charts uh just to get a, uh you know just to um to get a sense of uh what you thought about it and so <clears throat> When you watch Casta Semenya's video, you get a sense of emotions. You get a sense of the impact that uh, 
you know, uh, that a story can, can, can show you in the sense of the impact of, you know, misinformation, mis, you, know, you know, myths and misconceptions about people. But more importantly, stories are about power. And by us listening to uh, Casta Semenya's story, as told in that animation, it gives her power to tell her story without going into the science, because I mean, it could have easily have gone to the testosterone. I mean, there's a bit of that, uh, you know, and, and, this, and the script says, you know, so, uh, um, athletes are superheroes, da, 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 da. But what that particular story did is just, it, ga it gave Semenya power to tell her story. And that's exactly why uh, as comms people, uh, you know, when you're thinking about storytelling, think about it from, the, from that level. In addition to thinking, feeling, and acting differently, stories are about emotions because they are about people. You know, uh, you, you could tell stories about data, but they would not, I mean, they would not resonate as powerfully as when you see emotions. We see Casa Semenya falling down and her rising and her trying to come up, you know, where she's being dragged because of, you know, the, the, all the, you know, all the, the chemicals that she has to, to you know, to, to use to suppress her, her body. And then the impact of some of that on her and then the power that she, uh, her story has to us. And so stories, uh, and, and, and also another thing I should have mentioned, you'll also get this slide. So, uh, and, and this presentation is being recorded. So you will get to uh, go back and just review. So stories are about emotions, about impact, but more importantly, about power. Power for the audience, power for the person who tells the story and power for the person who actually acts as a result of that story. And so now that you know what looks like a good story, what makes a good story? <clears throat> so for the journalists in the house or in the room, they know that, uh, and, and comms people also know this, uh, a good story needs to take some of these boxes, not all of them, but if, if possible, all of them, the better, you know, actually not, not it should kick to take some, it should actually take most of them. Because news values, uh, for those who've never been in a, in a journalism or in a media setup, news values are what newspapers or journalists use to gauge whether they should publish a story or not. So sometimes you could be sending a press release about something that your organization did five years or six years ago, and for me as a journalist, I'm asking myself, how timely is this? Is it, is, are you sharing something new? Or are you telling me something that happened five, six years ago and you want me to write about it now? Common people know that your, your, your press release is going to die. So news values are all about timeliness. How, how, current it, how current is it? And it could be old, but can you make it current? So it could be uh, you had your last election five years ago but we are preparing for an election now. So the timeliness of the now vis-a-vis -vis then to, to why a journalist should use your content. The other bit is on proximity, uh, something that happens, I stay in Nairobi. Uh, if something happens in, uh, in, in Nairobi or in Westlands, I am most likely to ask what has happened, where, how many people, if let's say it was an accident or something, has, or I don't know, the president has been seen, our new president has been seen in Westlands or in Lower Kabete where I stay, I'll be like, oh, how close is he from where I am? So there's a the, the proximity in terms of the physical space, but also proximity in terms of the emotional space. Case in point is Casta Semenya's story. If, if, I'm a, if I'm an athlete, if I have a child who, you know, uh, who looks, sounds, acts like Casa Semenya, that story would resonate a bit more than if it was just a story about some, someone else who does not have anything close to me. So <clears throat> proximity is a, is a key news value. So even for you as, as a comms person, you're thinking about the storytelling, make it matter to the person who's going to read it. You know, uh, it, it make it closer to them. So proximity in terms of the physical and proximity in terms of the emotional and the and the mental aspect of it. News value is about impact. How many people, how many people are going to be affected by whatever it is that you, you're talking about? Uh, your story is about, you know, uh, let's, you know, if we, we go to Casa Semenya's story, we say uh, there are many other athletes who look and sound like her, maybe 50,000 that nobody ever knows about. So they, are, they have to be suppressed by chemicals. And as a result, then one, two, three, four. So the impact, 
impact here is usually in terms of numbers. And that's why you see journalists ask you, um, so how many people will benefit from this project? How many people have unfortunately died from that accident, the impact? And then prominence is a, is a key news value. Names make news. Uh, who in your organization is going to, to be in that event or who is the, who is the protagonist of this story? I, when you're thinking about it from, uh, from a storytelling perspective, who, which name should we know about this story? And then there's conflict. Someone wants something, someone doesn't want to give the thing, then there's a pull and push about it. So conflict is, you will see a couple of others in the next slide. And then novelty. So in, in the newsroom, we used to say, you know, um, when a dog expected, but when a man bites a dog, that's that's bizarre, that's new. That's, so for you in your story, you need to find the novelty aspect of it. Is it a vaccine? Has has what illness is it going to be treating? Is it uh, a new way of sending money, for instance? What was there before, and what and what is it different now with this? So these are elements of a, of a really good story. They need to tick all these boxes: timeliness, proximity, impact, prominence, conflicts, and novelty. But beyond this, and I've alluded to some of this, is that good stories need to have good characters. And good characters are people who look like you and me, people who are like Eunice, people who look like, uh, let me see whose name I can remember, CKK on the, on the group, you know, characters have to be human. So that, and even if they're not human, can you humanize the issue? You know, and, and this is really important, especially when you have data and you hear people say, uh, you know, um, as, is, as we speak right now, we say COVID has killed, you know, in millions. Those millions are people, those millions are families, those millions. So can you humanize the issue, whatever it is that you're telling, whatever story that you're telling, whatever comes that you're trying to push, whatever uh, solution that your organization or your business is doing, can you humanize the issue? So when you humanize, then you get empathy and then it goes back to think, feel, acting differently. The setting, where is it happening? You know, is it happening in space, for instance? It's, it's, it's no longer an impossibility because we, people are going to space, people are coming back from space, people are going under seas. What, what is, and then the action and the conflict, you know, someone wants something, but they can't get it. And a good story for sure has to be able to address the conflict and somehow win. You watch, you watch series, you watch movies. What keeps you hooked to those stories is because there's a character. So um, I'll give an example with Money Heist. Uh, a group of, of a, a bunch, a band of thieves uh, uh, coming together for whatever reason. Everybody is disenfranchised in their own way. They're looking for money, you know, and, and the, 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 the series builds the character, humanizes, they are thieves, yes, but they are humanized why each person is there. Nairobi is there because of this. Uh, you know, this person is there because of this. Uh, Helsinki is there because of that. The same thing it's in, a, in a bank set up is behind vaults. They will do whatever it is to get it. But of course, the police will not sit and wait for them to steal. They will fight them. And, and the goal here is to get, and they actually, you actually root for them to win. Winning here in the sense of you want them to get the money, but it's still, I know it, it, it's, a, it's a cognitive dissonance for you. You're like, I but I don't support thieves, but you still want them to win somehow. And again, it takes the boxes of novelty. It's a very strange kind of thing, you know, all that. So a good story that sits with you and that resonates with, with the audience has to take the boxes of the news values, and then these four. Up to that point, in case anyone has any question, please don't hesitate, just, just put it on the chat and I'll, I'll review. And now, just to put all this, what I've said into context, I, I would want us to watch another video. Um, so this is a, a, a video, so I'll, I'll paste, let me paste the link first. Let me paste the link here on the chat. Uh, one boy, so where we will get the recording, it will be posted by the comms avenue on their platforms. Um, so you should, you'll be able to get it. So don't worry about that. And so I want us to watch this video, uh, put, you know, considering the character, the setting, the action and the goal. Okay. 
So let us watch this other video. Wait, did you download Grammarly? All right, I'm gonna try and replicate this here. We're off to a great start. I tend to kind of just avoid doing sketching and writing now because it's just, it's not really worth it if you get something like that. Anything you could do that would just make my hand do what I want it to do and yeah. to be able to sign yeah. my name would be an incredible thing. How do we even just begin to help her overcome this, this particular symptom of her tremors and helping her be able to regain her writing ability, her drawing ability? You know, I don't think we're ever going to get that back 100%. You know, my challenge is, is uh, I mean, it's immense. Someone's made a spoon. It actually counteracts the tremors you get from Parkinson's. So the spoon actually vibrates in opposition to how your hand might be shaking. And it's therefore it's, it's steady. I'm making a, a very rough prototype. And what this board does is I can connect into it through these wires, these tiny coin cell motors. So these motors will vibrate. Hello. Hi, I'm Alison. It's affecting something. I don't quite know what's happening. Something is going on with it. What this is doing is it's short circuiting whatever feedback loop there is between the brain and the hand that's causing the tremors. I'm onto something, right? I'm, on, I'm onto something. She'd just written my name for like the first time in ages. Can't believe it. Mum, it's called the Emma. Oh, brilliant. It's, it's got my name on it. <laughs> got a prescription? Um, I'm just confirming that we can't, we saw the video. Did you see it? Someone, anyone tell me? Oh, you could only hear. Oh, my. Okay. So, who saw the video? Ah, you could only hear too. Okay. Anyone else who saw the video? Anyone who actually saw the video? Oh, you couldn't see it. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Let me try. Sorry guys, I'm here thinking we are all enjoying the video, but it uh, seems we were not. Okay, so let me see. Just a second, let me try. Sorry, 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 sorry. Let me try and share my screen again. Hmm. Sorry about that. Um, share screen. Okay. Can you see anything now? Okay. Yes. Okay. 
So I'll play this video and then I'll also play Casta Semenya's video, sorry. Right, I'm gonna try and replicate this here. We're off to a great start. I tend to kind of just avoid doing sketching and writing now because it's just, it's not really worth it if you get something like that. Anything you could do that would just make my hand do what I want it to do and yeah. to be able to sign yeah. my name would be an incredible thing. How do we even just begin to help her overcome this this particular symptom of her tremors and helping her be able to regain her writing ability, her drawing ability? You know, I don't think we're ever going to get that back 100%. You know, my challenge is, is uh, I mean, it's immense. Someone's made a spoon, it actually counteracts the tremors you get from Parkinson's. So the spoon actually vibrates in opposition to how your hand might be shaking, and it's therefore it is steady. I'm making a, a very rough prototype. And what this board does is I can connect into it through these wires, these tiny coin cell motors. So these motors will vibrate. Hello, I am Alison. It's affecting something. I don't quite know what's happening. Something is going on with it. What this is doing is it's short circuiting whatever feedback loop there is between the brain and the hand that's causing the tremors. I'm on to something, right? I'm on, I'm on to something. She just written my name for like the first time in ages. Can't believe it. Mum, it's called the Emma. Oh, brilliant. It's, it's got my name on it. <laughs> okay. This is Ghana, West Africa. When I was seven, I was brought. Okay, so um, so oh, I'm supposed to be sharing back my screen. One second, one second, one second. Share screen. So that's Aunt uh, Emma's story. Um, I don't know what 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 do you guys think. What did you think? What did it? What did that video make you think, feel, and act? I want to put it on the on the comment. Uh -huh. Let's see uh, what people are saying. Um, uh, shows uh, how feelings uh -huh. like it was happening to me. There was excitement. I was inspired. I could feel her joy, and and that's that's exactly what stories are about. I mean, this this was this was a a, a product that was done by Microsoft. And for them, they wanted to only do it for one person. They only wanted to do a, 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 you know, a device for Emma, which is called Project Emma, who has Parkinson's. She's an artist. Now imagine you as a comms person, not being able to use your pen, not being able to, to type out, not being able to tell your story because of you know, a disability just that just came in your adulthood. 
And then you have an organization that sets out to actually solve that problem just for you. And that's storytelling. I mean, uh, Microsoft could have easily, and, and at no point did you see Microsoft saying, oh, hey guys, we're the ones who did this, but they, they let Emma tell her story in a way that was so powerful, so memorable, so inspiring, as I've seen someone share on the, on the chat, that it makes you start to think, am I doing a disservice for my brand or for my organization, looking at all the solutions, because all organizations are in business to solve a problem. So whatever solution that your business is doing, you need to be able to turn it into a story, tell it and show the impact through a person like Emma. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a very powerful way of showing without telling because Microsoft could have easily done a press release on this. We came up with a, in an invention that helps people to write uh you know it, it, it will cost x amount of money it's available here and then they will say uh, for more details please call the communications officer da, da, da. i mean it could have easily been a press release but it was a story which is more powerful more memorable for your audiences and again when you think about proximity someone else who has parkinson's if i know someone with parkinson's i will never forget what microsoft has done for emma and that is exactly what storytelling is about, being able to say, if it did for someone else, then it can do for me. And I see charts are coming in uh, uh, quick and fast and someone saying, I was in my fields. Okay, uh -huh, thank you. Uh, you know, it gives me a glimpse into Parkinson's. So it, it makes you think differently, feel differently, gives you a sense of hope, which is interesting, which is nice. And you will, you will, you, you, you can always, after this, you can just go back and, and watch the video, you know, and just resonate with it a bit more. But that is the power of stories. Remember the, the three things I talked about, emotions, impact, and the power of stories. And now that we know what a good story looks like, I want to give you, so I want us to move, now that you know, when you see it, what a good story is, I want to give you a cheat code. So in comms, we're always looking for the easiest, fastest way of doing something. And I won't lie, we all do that. And so with this in mind, and uh, I, I, uh, maybe you can watch uh, Casta Semenya's uh, afterwards, after, after, after the next video, I want to give you a cheat code of how, if, you, if you're there as a comms person and you're wondering, okay, you need, so you're telling me and you're showing me these nice videos, I'm in my fields, I feel like, oh my God, I've been, I need an opportunity to, to, to you know, to prove myself, how do I go about it? So there's this, um, uh, there's this uh, formula, it's called the Pixar pitch, and I hope you can see my screen. Let me just, sorry, I'm on two devices just so that I, I get a, a, an experience of how you seeing it and how I'm talking so that I, I don't assume you're seeing things. Pixar are uh, the, I think for me, the best animation producers. These guys, they make cartoons, but their storylines are amazing. Their stories are out powerful way. And the Pixar pitch, basically, this is the formula. If you forget everything else from this discussion about how, as a comms person, you can tell stories, just learn these six sentences and I'll, and I'll illustrate how it works. So most of the Pixar stories start off like this, not, not necessarily in those words of once upon a time there was, but it shows you how life was before. So storytelling is about the how and the why the world or, or life is happening the way it is. So I'll give an example. So once upon a time, uh, if, we, if we were to tell Emma's story, for instance, uh, and you'll see an example with Pixar's, once upon a time, Emma was a, an, a budding, you know, a, a thriving artist, if, if you may. And every day she would do, she would draw lines and sketches and, you know, she would do uh, stuff and, and uh, you know, amazing uh, illustrations. And she got clients from here to, uh, I don't know, Timbuktu. And, you know, she could do one, two, three, four, five. One day, though, as she was holding her pen, she start, her hand started trembling. And she thought maybe it's because of the pressure of the, of the you know, the high client. And she said, oh, let me take a break. Let me come back. But the more she kept you know, holding the pen, trying to write, it didn't work. I mean, she was just trembling. And because of that, she couldn't do the assignment. She couldn't fulfill the work that was needed. And because of that, she couldn't write her own name. I mean, that is a big deal. 
And uh, as a result of that, you know, so she has, she went out to seek for help. Of course, people would not understand. Uh, people were, you know, and and in you know African setups, when someone has such an uh, such a you know a condition where your hand is shaking, people will write you or people will say, oh, you you can never amount to anything. And so she, you know, she became recluse. She didn't, but she found a way of of sharing her problem with the scientists. Now the doctor who we saw creating the you know the 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 watch that would then for every tremor that she gets there was an a counter to it so then her hand if it was trembling like this then it was put back with that watch until finally this new innovation was able to allow us to go back to where it where she was before so that's the pixar pitch six simple sentences but they tell your story so powerfully I'll give an example with, uh, you know, with what I do. I, I, I work at Safaricom and tell stories. Uh, I, at, at least on my part, I tell, I find stories, I hunt for stories and I tell stories. And one of the best stories that we've told and I'm sure we all know about is about M-Pesa. Once upon a time, we, if you needed to send money, if you, your parents needed to send you money, about 15 years, 16 years ago, they would have to put it on, give it to a conductor in a bus, you know, uh, write an envelope with the, the envelope with your name and say, please, Ukifika, when you get to, sorry, I'm speaking, sorry, when you get to Kitui or to Mombasa, please, my daughter is going to be waiting for you at the, on the roadside, give her this envelope. So every day, people used to send money like that. One day, the bus that everybody used to trust, was it, be it a Kamba, Coast bus, whichever, got into an accident. And so all the money that people had sent in their envelopes, da, 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 would not get to their destinations. And because of that, Eunice could not go to school because the money was not there. Uh, but then because of those hitches and glitches, Safaricom sat back and they said, how can we change this narrative? They came up with a mobile, uh, you know, mobile payment platform, M-Pesa. M-Pesa now allows you without having to move money you know having first of all the the risk of you giving money to someone you don't know then the risk of that money getting lost in case of an accident or something uh, that happens but in a with a you know with a press of a button and literally we know for those of us kenyans it takes you less than five minutes for even five minutes is a lot three minutes from when someone tells you this is the pay bill to you paying in and out you're done and because of that you're able to pay your school fees until finally now mpesa is available to 40 million customers picks a pitch simple six sentences and whatever it is that your organization does you can use this you can use this pitch uh, as a guide for you to tell your story and now that i've i've i've, I've wet your appetite around what the Pixar pitch is about, I want us to watch a video that brings that to life. So I will, uh, just a minute, I will, uh, let me see, oh, you can actually see, just a minute, so you can see that, let me, okay, can you see my screen? Yeah, I think you can see it, I can see it from my end as well. Mm -hmm. So tell me, tell me, tell me, what did you guys think about the video? Somebody, anyone, what did you think about the video? Did it make you feel, think, act differently? I will check on the chats. Uh -huh. So many messages from this story. Uh, if I could uh, pick some of them, uh, diversity and inclusion, you know, our businesses are always saying we are diverse, we are inclusive, we, we, bring, in, we bring on board people of different uh, backgrounds. I mean, you could easily have that on a press release. You could easily have that on your on your website and say we are cool peeps, but you could show it as well, this video has. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, inclusivity. I see inclusion. Someone has said the theme of authenticity, being true to yourself. Very, very. I mean, I like that faith. Uh, representation matters. I like that, and being able to see people who look like you, who need your hand, uh, you know, representation. I love that, Karen, and Paris as well, representation, trying to fit in, you know, opening doors to newbies. All these are things that as comms people we're dealing with, you know, as corporate comms people, we are constantly seeing this. As media people, we are constantly seeing this. But then how we tell some of these stories go a long way. 
you know, uh, someone is saying opening doors to newbies, prejudice and discrimination in the workplace, thanks to Seal, uh, where, you know, celebrities fitting, standing out is difficult, true, excellent for brand and media visibility. I mean, you guys are getting the gist that whatever you could easily give as a press release could be a story. Whatever you could give as your annual report could be a story. So being able to know when you can turn what into what goes a long way. And I want us to do an exercise. I want us to, on the chat, to tell me uh, an area, uh, an area, I mean, the work that you do uh, in, in whatever platform, in, in whatever, I mean, around comms, just if it's engineering, if it is humanitarian work, just put it on the chat. And then uh, let's see if we can try and spin a yarn around a potential story. So put it up on the on the chat. Um, any first takers? Uh -huh. So brand, uh, Ismaila says brand um, utility company. Um, I, I can't tell what that is someone says humanitarian work someone says communication from communications research uh, rehema says conservation um mm -hmm, communications for development i want us to pick one um and and um, you can you can please if you can uh chima says uh communications and advocacy at a red cross okay or brand manager in a utility company um so maybe ismaila you can just give us a bit more detail um i don't know if you can unmute yourself if it's possible just to get a sense of what utility you offer and what you do. Um, I see Botul uh, talking about uh, research, population and health. Go ahead, Ismail. Good, <clears throat> Good evening. Hello, hi. Um, um, in the, we are in the utility company in Nigeria here in Kano. Uh -huh. And the utility company based on um, electricity provision. We supply electricity. Mm -hmm. to customers in Kano, Kazina, and Jigawa. Mm -hmm. so that is the brand, basically. So we are brand managers here. What we do is we maintain the brand. We mm -hmm. ensure the brand is actually visible in the media. We mm -hmm. issue press releases. We issue media releases. And then stories about the brand to the customers, why the customers should pay their bills, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So basically, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, thank you so much, Ismaila, for that. Um, and and I, I mean, if I was to think of a story, I would think about uh, the solution. You know, you're providing a key utility, electricity. Without electricity, we wouldn't be here right now. We wouldn't be having this discussion. Kids would not be doing their homeworks after school. Uh, hospitals would not be running. Uh, and and that in and of itself, the solution is a story. You know, uh, the press release where you'd say uh, we've been able to connect. Uh, uh, 1,000 households in Kano and this and that and that place could easily be going to Kano, identifying one, one household where electricity is transforming that community. And, by t and, and how do you, how would you do that? You would probably tell the story of, you know, how electricity is very crucial for this family from, you know, the mother who, or the parents who work from home, for instance, or the, you know, they, they have a, I don't know, they, they, what example, they have kids who are in school, uh, that they need electricity to study, they need electricity to, you know, keep their equipment running. As in, you can show without, without necessarily saying, we are changing uh, communities like this, in text and text is not bad but can you visualize it because stories can can be in text but the visual elements go a long way so i'm, I'm hoping that uh, with that one example you can see that there are stories as i started in the beginning my very first slide there are stories everywhere everywhere there are stories um let me see if there's another example that we can also use let's see uh, sports marketing in the sports tourism sector. Oh, this sounds interesting. Uh, please, Ochuko, if you can uh, unmute yourself and just give us a little bit of a, of a, of a sense of what exactly it is that you, your team does. Sports? Okay, maybe you're not in a, in, in a place to, uh, to unmute. I see someone has, has spoken about animal uh, feed industry. Uh -huh. Important. Uh, Rehema, if you're in a position to unmute, maybe just tell us a bit about 
the, the conservation work that you're doing and uh, potential and potential stories that you have as well from the end. I don't know if you can unmute. Okay. Okay. So I'm muted, but I'm not sure he's not he's not speaking. But there's a hand up. Should I? Yes, yes, yes. Whose hand is up? I can't tell from my end. Oh, I see Toyosi. Toyosi, your hand is up. Okay, I think we can proceed. Uh, bottom line is, there are stories in everything that you're doing. The opportunities for you to turn the complex uh, info into, into content that anyone, I see someone has unmuted. Toyosi, do you have something to add? Okay. Um, Hi, Toyosi. Okay, so if you won't be able to talk, may I ask we unmute you, please? Um, okay, so I want us to think about what is your story? I, I, and I'm hoping that you've, we've tagged along up to where we are now, that you've been able to see opportunities for you to unpack and, and, and weave your stories out. So then um, I want us to watch another video and this video is really close to my heart. Um, it's a video by Safaricom. It's, a, it's our latest brand campaign. It's called Tuinwane. Uh, in Kiswahili, that means, you know, uh, uplifting one another. So I, I don't want to say anything. I just want us to watch the video. Uh, and then... So let me start with the think uh, so i know it's in uh, in kiswahili but uh, uh, for those who got it even from the visuals what what did you feel what did it make you think what did it make you act i'll check from the chats what people are saying um sorry um so for those who didn't follow the idea with this was to Talk about how Safaricom. So Safaricom, for those who do not know, is a, is a, East Africa's and Kenya's largest uh, telecommunications company, providing you know different kinds of services. Uh, M-Pesa is one of them that I alluded to in the beginning uh, at some point. Uh, phone calls, internet, um, the whole spectrum, and now getting into technology as well. So the idea behind this brand really was to talk about empowering communities, giving students easy and simple access to learning materials and unveiling innovating products and services that give customers value for money. I mean, any business could have easily put that on a release and we actually sent out a release, could have easily given a speech and said, we are set, we're setting out a brand, we want to do one, two, three, four, five. But we went a step further and we chose to tell the story to humanize 
what exactly we wanted to do. And from this video, you've seen these are kids. Some of them are able to differently, some of them in crutches, some, you know, and they're going to a neighboring school to play uh, football. I mean, what, I, and, I, and I, I want to hear from you guys, what, what did you think, feel, act? Which characters do you remember? What was the context? What was the issue? Could you resonate? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The power in unity, happiness is in sharing, giving a helping hand, and actually a helping hand, you can see even hand being lifted, so uplifting each other. No one is left behind. Uh -huh. Even if we were to mute the audio, we would still get the message. I love that. I love that bottle. With that, even without, even if you didn't understand, you would still see the story. And that's that's the beauty of storytelling in this day and age that you can visualize you can take people on a journey take them in put them in a bus with you drive on the scenic routes get to a you know and and just tell the story and i think and i want to challenge you to do the same also as comms people you don't have to have huge budgets and i'll show you how you can do it in the in the next slides you can tell your story in the most simplest of ways without, I mean, budgets are important in comms and in, in, in communications, but you don't have to say, because you don't have a budget, then we can't do anything. And um, I, I have worked in research communications. I have worked in, uh, you know, in, in conservation. I've written about coral reefs. I have done extensive work around health communications. Currently, I'm doing developmental comms and really storytelling, humanizing the brand, humanizing Safaricom. And one thing that I always say is that a story should be able to move people whether or not they get your, your message in, in the language. And as, as Botula, and I'll just repeat what she said, even if you were to mute the audio, would still get it. So think about you as, as, a, as a communicator in research comms, in whatever field that you're in, in financial uh, inclusion, in how are you able to bring people in and hook them to start thinking about your brand, about your organization in a different way. And I'll give you pointers. So, I mean, most of my presentation we see is all about cheat codes and pointers and ideas. So then, because I learned the hard way, I mean, in my, in my communications media journey, I had to find some of this information, but I would want it to be easier for you. And then you can localize it in whichever way that works for you. So how to tell your story, if you were to think about how this story was told uh, and all the others that you've seen, you need to think visual. More and more, all of us are on our phones. We are constantly on our phones. We are constantly sharing stuff on WhatsApp. We are constantly you know, forwarding stuff. So even for you, as you're thinking about, I mean, I'm a, I'm a writer, but I know the vital role of making visual what I think would have been is could have easily been text so if you can get powerful photos you know when you think about and this was just a snapshot sorry just a snapshot a screen grab of two kids it's a powerful image two different teams you know young boys hanging out get as many powerful photos as you can to tell your story online videos as we've seen long form documentaries as we've seen with the PAL and with Emma, it could have easily been 10 minutes of the journey around illustrations as well, animations, as, and I'll, I'll show you this with the Semenya's story, and infographics, because not, more and more people, the attention span is not, it's not, uh, you can't hold people in for long, so we give them something quick, fast, let them enjoy it, let them move. As you have seen on, on that video uh, that we watched, uh, the, the Tunwani video is less than, I think it's less than four minutes, actually. It's la, like a three minutes video. Let me check. It's a, it's a very, very brief, straight to the point. So make it short, make it snappy, but for where you can do long form documentaries, please go ahead. And this works a lot, works very well even uh, for research content, for conservation, take people on a journey. The other way, the how of you telling press releases, which by the way, more and more are getting uh, obsolete, people are moving to digital text. So find ways to have content stories in digital formats. Audio, 
podcasts are your friends twitter spaces are your you know a, a, a place for you to flex your muscle to tell the story of your organization if you've never thought about it perhaps you could and, and i'm not saying that all of these work for everyone but it doesn't hurt for you to try you can try it and see that did it work for us uh, i know in audio there's a those clubhouse there is clubhouse as well try it out just try it as a homes person i always say you you are a risk taker on behalf of your of your client on behalf of your of your organization try it radio long-standing uh, best used um, channel use it also in person if you can be you know meet people in person and tell their stories please try it out and 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 how this can be done is you know when you when someone needs to do a pitch and this would be uh, people who have been business development come up craft a story around your product and then try out pitches so that you're not only sending we have this portfolio here is our is our is our pdf try it in person you'd be surprised because then you'll hear people will pick non-verbal cues think of any opportunity where you have in person as an opportunity for you to tell your story fireside discussions as well and you see this a lot uh, more and more in conferences where people are saying oh let's put aside the powerpoint presentation let's talk you know in person the other way that you can also you can tell your stories is through new media and experiential social media is your friend i i know the organizations and i've, I've been in meetings I've, I've been i've made presentations to organizations that say oh, oh no for us us guys don't do social media because you are a conservative organization we won't try uh you know we won't try tiktok maybe just maybe tiktok would be that platform you needed to tell your story differently i'm not saying you have to but it doesn't hurt for you to try you'd be surprised the eyeballs you'll get on that platform. Still storytelling, but now getting a medium to get it out, reality and virtual reality. You know, you want to tell people about, you know, the impact of your utility, uh, your utility company. And, you know, so having people go through a journey of uh, seeing what it means to have light, what it means to have Empesa, what it means to have, you know, for you to conserve, uh, you know, elephants uh, pathways or homes, what it means for you to do research around Parkinson's. And I saw someone uh, sharing on this uh, on the chat. I didn't know that Parkinson's affects young people. It does. Can you tell it in a different format? But my best formats, and, um, and this is not in terms of which is, you know, priority. I think a beautiful way is to create an immersive experience. And I'll give you an example. Please, if you guys can try it, I would be elated to know that it worked for you. Immersive experiences. So I'll give you an example. So imagine you're working uh, in an organization and your work is around uh you know helping people with disabilities and it could be people who are blind it could be people who are deaf it could be people who are physically you know uh, uh, have to move with a wheelchair you know physically challenged or whichever other disability and there are many you know the visible and the invisible ones but let's use let's say someone is blind and your board members keep saying we need to raise money we need to raise money, we need to, so that we can provide more cans for people, the cans, you know, as a guide for them to walk, or so that we can get them, we can get braille books, so that we can get technologies and, and uh, their, their, their watches where, uh, like Safaricom has a product called the braille watch, the dot braille watch, where literally uh, someone who's blind can get, uh, if they need to read a message, because, you know, messages come as text, it is converted onto their watch into a dot thingy and then they can touch it and they can know who has sent the money and how much it is but that's not the story so the story here is the board members are saying Eunice uh, they're, they're asking uh, they're asking uh, Charles they're asking you Rehema to come up with an innovative way for us to raise money so how I would tell this story I would do it in this way I would propose we do a symposium or we, we do a conference for instance and the idea is invite as many different policy makers you know people who uh, their action how they think feel and act about people who are blind could easily raise funds for us for our organization so we call our organization uh, you know vision for all for instance and so the idea that i would propose a, a, a massive storytelling experience would be let's have an event 
And so I want us to walk, walk with me in this idea. So you come to the event. So this is the Minister for Health, or this is a, a, a donor or a funder. Um, thinking Bill Gates has come to Nairobi specifically for this event. So they walk into our venue. So our venue is probably a nice hotel or our offices even, doesn't even have to be a, remember I told you, you don't have to have money for you to tell beautiful stories. It could be your office. So when they get to the reception, uh, they're told, oh, welcome to uh, Vision for All. Um, are you here for this and that conference? They said, you're told, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so then they're told, okay, so please uh, come with me. So uh, they walk in and just, as, just before they get into the boardroom, someone tells them, okay, uh, here, get, uh, so they give them dark glasses, you know, the glasses that someone who's blind uh, would ordinarily wear because of their eyes have them wear that, then give them a can, the walking can, the white can, okay? And then have someone to hold their other hand, so having a guide, and then open the boardroom and they walk in and there's not a single light on, okay? It's an immersive experience, so bear with me, come with me in this, in this story. So they get into the venue, there's no single light, and immediately they realize they can't walk. So they're using their, their stick for the first time if they've never done it before. So their stick is to show them where their obstacles because that's how it works. They can basically tell them this obstacle is this close or this far, uh, this is the depth. So if it's a staircase, they know they need to move down and let them sit in that meeting, let them sit in that engagement in darkness and they only get to hear people talk. So, Thank you very much for coming to our meeting. Today's meeting is about fundraising for one, two, three, four, five. We want to raise money and there's no lights, like their sense of sight is completely disabled. You tell me if in an hour of them experiencing, you're, you're not telling them the experience of someone who's blind, you're letting them experience, you know, you, you, you're letting them have an immersive experience and, and telling them now, now that you have felt what it is like an hour of just not seeing, not be even not even being sure if you're going to fall, whether you are seated in the uh, on the edge, whether you know, and let them, and then now ask for this is why we need your funds. This is why we need you to chip in for us to do one, two, three, four, five. That I think, and I've always wanted, I've always said, if I, I wish I had an opportunity to do such a story, but now in a massive way, you know. It could be someone, you know, the blind experience. It could be um, the deaf experience. You sit in a room, everybody's talking, but your ears are muzzled. You can't hear a thing. People are talking, people are laughing. You want to be part of that conversation, but you can't. And then now bringing in, you know, humanizing the issue. This is why this is important. This is why vision for all exists. And for storytellers, we're always being told, you know, or people think, oh, you can only do it in this way. Nothing stops you from creating an immersive experience. And I have seen many other organizations where they play with your senses, they play with the imagination, they play with your emotions. In a sense of, I've seen a video, a story of someone who has, um, you know, uh, 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 schizophrenia. So they get, they hear different voices. So they can't even, you can't tell what, what voice is what. And you watch the video and you almost feel like you're going to get, you're starting to hear voices in your head. So as storytellers, as comms people who now are shifting into, into storytelling, find creative ways to take, to immerse your audience into that discussion. You don't have to have money. If you have, the better. But if you don't, look, use what you have within you. And for me, um, these, these, I think, uh, have been my best highlights around storytelling, that there are people who create immersive ex and there are so many ways. There are people who, um, who like uh, the, these guys called Tommies, they make shoes. They've been able to create an argumented reality, an immersive experience of the people who give them funds or give them money to show them for the one shilling, the one dollar you give to us, this is where it goes. We can do that as comms people. We can show the return on investment without necessarily saying for every five shillings put into this project has saved or has done one, two, three, four for elephants or for, for you know, for cheetahs. 
or for what, one or another kind of conservation. So that is my advice. Think about whatever it is project that you're doing, if it is utility work, whatever it is that, you, you know, sports, ETC, ETC, find a way to make your audience be part of that story, okay? And that is what I would say is the picture of success, being able to show without telling. You could have easily told people, if you're blind, you will not be able to move around easily, you could fall down. You could easily have said that, but you showing it, but by you having people to get that immersion, it goes a long way. Uncover the human side of the brand or the organization. Microsoft with their project Emma uh, device, uh, Safaricom with, you know, M-Pesa to Inuane ETC, find a way to bring the human side of your brand of your organization and then completely involve the audience in the story with emma we were in our fields you're like oh my god i hope she's able to write i hope she's able to draw a straight line you know um and i want us to watch caster uh, semenyas then you will you will be part of that discussion you will say oh actually i didn't think about it like that now i see it so up to that point, I don't know if anybody has a comment, any question, any feedback, anything that they would want to add. Sorry about that. Anyone? Any feedback? Okay, so I'm guessing that uh, We've all been inspired and we are completely uh, sold. I'm trying to find, um, just a minute, I'm trying to find Castor Semenya's story. Okay. Um, as you guys are thinking about it, let me play. What do you guys think? Let's see from the chat, what do you guys think about uh, the video? So I see Chima is saying, I can make a video, but how do you make that video an immersive experience? Mm -hmm. Nice question. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hope I can, I can answer it. Um, Katalong says that's a strong campaign right there. True, indeed it is. Uh, it unpacks, it shows, it doesn't tell you, it uncovers the human side of the brand, uh, and in this case, Lux and what Lux believes in, and it completely, yeah, 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then yeah, and, and it completely involves the audience because now you are you you are rooting for her. And uh, I see Ade has uh, Doreen says that uh, it humanizes the issue. Uh, you know, it's a strong campaign. I agree. Uh, so there's a question here: How I can make a video? But how do you make the video an immersive experience? Anyone who would want to uh, to share feedback with Chima? So you can there you can you can either combine the different platforms or the different channels or you can do them separately and and how to make a video an immersive experience i will share uh i will share a link let me find it let me find it the uh, one i mentioned about tommy's uh, uh it answers that question very well tommy um uh, vr experience let me just share I, i'm just getting the link um then i will share it on the on the chat uh -huh. Uh, Tommy's shoes. Hmm. Okay, a minute. Um, yeah. So I will find. I'll find the video, then I'll share it. So then you can, uh, you can see how they do it. Uh, but in the meantime, any any other feedback, any questions, um, you might have. So I've gotten the video. Just uh, sharing it in a bit. Oh, sorry. Um, any question, any feedback as I get that? Mm -hmm. Hi, Eunice. I have a question. Mm -hmm. so, so I think I think definitely storytelling is is really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. I remember a few years ago, I went for an event and the company was handing out um, a report. I think it was like the annual report and <laughs> it was, I don't know how to describe it. It was a chunk, like a very, very chunky and heavy mm -hmm. document. And I said to the person that handed it over to me that, do you expect me to read this? And this <laughs> is a company that I didn't even have an interest in the company. So even maybe if I had an interest in the company, I might have said, okay, let me look at it. But I don't have an interest in your company. You have given me this chunky mm. text to tell me about what you've done and achieved. So, and then I'm thinking about mm. communicating to the board, communicating to investors. How can we incorporate these elements of storytelling? Because I, I really feel like it would have been more impactful for that organization to have done a one pager infographic mm -hmm. or something than that. And then if I wanted to read more, maybe there'll be a a bitly link to a website, yeah. right? Mm. So I just wanted to speak, speak more on on what you think about that. Yeah, yeah. I think I think as as comms people, uh, long uh, uh, I mean, long gone are the days where you had to have a six hundred page document or a, you know even smaller twelve page document to tell me about the impact that you've had. Can you do it in a snapshot? Can you do it in an infographic? Can you do it in a one pager? And it's possible. Who, you know, this is what we went, this is the problem. This is what we wanted to do. And this is how we solved it. Simple. More details, QR code, link, get, let them go and, and, and read more details. And as, as comms people, you know, sometimes uh, people who, 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 who are used to how comms used to look like, you know, traditionally, they would say, but we need an annual report. It doesn't mean your annual report has to be 100 pages. It doesn't. Uh, and the organizations that do this very well, can you do a digital annual report? Something very simple, something very easy to use, easy to digest. Can you turn that into a video? And the organizations, and I'm, I'm more than happy uh, after this session, I can I can compile some creative in, uh, annual reports that people have put together that are not necessarily texts, that are videos. Um, an organization that I, 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 I like that also does this, um, is APHRC, African Population and Health Research Center. So within the text, so that's APHRC, please look them up, they have an annual report. I used to work there and I used to do uh, research and health communications. And a report, an annual report is a digital, has a digital version of it. You click on something, you watch a video, you go on another section, you will see an infographic. I mean, nothing stops you from, from doing it in, in a such, in a multimedia kind of way, because ultimately you want to tell a story. There are places I actually have, it's just that I can't, I can't get it. There are, there are conferences I've been to, and literally the whole annual report was the size of this phone. 
just something very tiny, you know, infographic with this is the issue. And they, they even, they, I think they even call them like play cards. It was like a deck of cards. I think I have it somewhere in the house, a deck of card, cards and, and it has, this is the issue, this is the uh, the problem, this is how we solved it, and, and this is the impact you've had. So you, you put it in your pocket, you can put it on your, on your sleeve. And I remember seeing that and I was like, but why then do we put so much? I mean, it, it, it needs you to think outside the box. So people who are even doing fridge magnets, quick, fast information, and then QR code link, the story is done. So you don't have to, to get to the, you know, the rat race of doing complex kinds of reports. I mean, there are people who would still want them, do it for them, but for, for you know, forward looking kind of storytelling and comms, make it pretty, make it short, because I will not, for sure, I will not forget the organization that gave me a deck of cards as the annual report. I will never forget them. I, I keep them. I actually have a stash of creative comms things that I pick from different places. So I keep those things. Can you turn it into a comic? I know when I was at APHRC, we did um, one of the annual reports we did, we, we had literally animations, little, you know, figurines and people, and we had our annual report. It was not your, your, your A4 kind of size. It was like a, a B5. It looked like a postcard, like you can try different things because Again, sometimes it's not even in, in it's not even the, the message, it's sometimes it's even the medium. How does it look like that resonates with people? So that's that's my, my advice that I would give. Um, let me see. Uh-huh. Uh, Joy talks about, oh sorry. Um, uh, let me just go back. Uh, how do you make an uh, annual report interesting? If you were to read a 200 page document, you wouldn't finish it. So think about your audience think about yourself and then be creative. And I've said, as I've said, I've just spoken about the organizations that are actually doing it. In fact, the organizations that even don't even have an annual report, they call them our failure report. All the things that they couldn't do right, they put them up and they say, these are the lessons we learned. Which organization do you hear talking about our failures? They don't. But by talking about your failures and the lessons you've picked, you're offering yourself out as a human, you have a human side, you're vulnerable, and this is the lessons we've gotten. And it endears to people because someone sits back and they say, oh, okay. So that big brand also struggles like us. Again, makes me think differently about them, makes me feel differently about them, makes me act differently about them. Uh -huh. So one minute video can capture who you are and in uh -huh, fact sheet and that one page, that's true. Uh, Hi, Botul. Yes, 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 yes. Please share the 2021 annual report. Please do. It's amazing. Uh, multimedia is the word completely. Multimedia. If you, if can, can you get photos? As I said, you know, the house, the photos, etc. Use that visual. I mean, what stops you from even having photos of different, uh, you know, different elements of your work in, in a meeting? and have people talk because, you know, as cliche as this sounds, a picture speaks a thousand words, let people talk about, you know, you could have a photo of your device or your whatever and have people talk about it. And, and then now you have more details about the device and how it works, etc. Uh, Joy talks about, um, yeah, and I'm imagining this is the Casa Semenya, talking about her as a sports hero, making this about every person who's been left out. That's true, not Casa Semenya alone. Uh, yeah, so a digital annual report, I think Botul is going to put it up. She's already put it out. Um, uh -huh. Do you see storytelling replacing uh, press releases in the near future? I think yes and no. Yes, in the sense that more and more people are keen on quick, fast information, but then the people who still would want additional information afterwards. And that is, I'll give an example of that with the current uh, media landscape. The people who get all their information online on social media, so a tweet, uh, tweets from um, a media house, and then when they want in depth, then they go back and they either buy the newspaper or they go and get the digital version of the newspaper. So there's a place for both. Ultimately, uh, you know, people say, uh, you know, print is dead, long live print. Ultimately, print will still be there, but now you'll need to add more value for someone to still want to read your press release vis-a-vis -vis watching your video alone and getting it at a go. So I think yes and no, uh, storytelling and, and more so um, creative storytelling might replace 
uh, you know, press releases and the traditional way, but there's still going to be a place. So the, the, the idea here is how can you add more value so that you still retain people beyond, you know, the feel good, think good, act good, uh, the storytelling offers. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, it brings up to the point of having your activities properly documented. Yes, yes, document, document. You just, you could easily make a reel from photos. Sometimes you assume, oh, I don't, I don't need, we don't need to take a photo of this. Maybe, just take it. You just never know when you're going to need it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, photo storytelling. Yes, I've seen your work, Thomas. Uh, you know, photo photography, it goes a long way. It goes a long way. And, and especially if you have, you know, series of photos that one picks today it almost feels like uh you're watching a video but then it's 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 sequential so you you feel like you're part of that of those videos so that also is a is a powerful way of telling stories as well so if you forget everything else your picture of success around storytelling as comes people is sure don't tell uncover the human side and completely involve your audience in summary, and I've spoken a lot, uh, write and tell stories more often because that's the only way you sharpen. Think of think about the skill of storytelling as a as a knife or as a tool. The more you sharpen it, the better it becomes. So write often, tell stories often. That's the only way you learn. That's the only way you stumble on you know people who are doing immersive uh, you know storytelling experiences. That's the only way you stumble stumble on adverts that you know they they sell you a product and you want to buy it i have bought things simply because of of how they were marketed you know something as simple as grammarly uh for a while i, I kept you know having left the newsroom i kept telling myself i need to write better i need to keep writing and then i kept saying but i need someone to also watch that i'm writing correctly my you know my vocabulary is uh, up you know uh, current you see until i started seeing the adverts for grammarly and you know they would make it and you're watching youtube and you're like ah Sort of having that long sentence they could break it into two and make it and i i actually paid for a premium version would i have done it before maybe not but now i look back and i'm like hmm grammarly is actually a good investment same for and many other platforms so right often you will learn more or tell telling stories more you will also learn other people's stories the other thing is to find your voice uh, you can't speak like everyone but you can speak as yourself my voice as eunice kilonzo is as different as Thomas's Buires, as Botul's voice, as everyone else's voice. So find your voice and, and, and let it and grow it and strengthen it as much as possible. My voice over the years have been, as I mentioned, health communications, which I love passionately. Uh, I, and then, you know, uh, environmental uh, storytelling, financial inclusion, you know, uh, telecommunications, technology, and who knows where tomorrow, what kinds of stories. So you always, your voice will keep changing. But at the heart of it is that you still know stories have power, stories have impact, stories have, you know, the emotional connection. So those underlying issues stay, but the voice can keep changing as you go. Give examples. Uh, we've been able to do uh, we've been able to connect X number of of, uh, of houses with the, you know, using um, uh, Internet of Things to give them utility services, uh, such as in Kano, we've done one, two, three, give examples. People want to, you, you're quantifying, you're giving proof of your work. So give examples as much as possible. And these examples are where your stories are. That, these are your case studies. These are the people who sound, who look, you know, the characters, the setting, etc. Give examples. And then as a brand, please don't talk about yourself. I know the temptation is there. You want to tell people we are the best, we are solving your problem. But imagine you don't have to tell us who you are from the beginning to the end. Of all the videos that you've seen, and I hope you were able to see, Lux with Casa Semenya, they only spoke about themselves at the end. Lux believes in. Project Emma, if I hadn't told you guys it was Microsoft, you probably wouldn't have known it was Microsoft. Safaricom, all the way up until the outro, you wouldn't have known, well, unless you're Kenyan and you know the colors and you know the, the, our style, you wouldn't have known. And many other examples. So don't talk about yourself. APHRC, uh, you know, Camry or whichever organization, show the solution, so show the impact, show the people, and then let 
someone say, oh, but who are these people? Whose vision for all, for instance? Don't talk about yourself. Do your keyword research. By doing your keyword research around topics, you will know what kinds of stories people want to hear right now. So that you're not shooting in the dark, you know what your audience is looking for. And, and the best way to do this is go to Google Analytics. So, so literally just search what are Kenyans Googling the past six months and you will get a story. You would probably see someone, people are, are, are Googling, uh, let's say in Kenya during this uh, election period, people are asking, who is likely to win or how technology is being used for elections. And you have your story, so you can build your story. So always do your keyword, whatever it is that you're doing, don't start blindly, do your keyword research. Of course, be current. You remember the, the timeliness, be current, be now, but also bring in the background, contextualize why this is happening now, has it happened before? Stay current. Just because you're, you're current doesn't mean that you are staying current. So stay current in terms of technologies, uh, how other brands are doing it, learn from other people, benchmark, I know it's, it's a cliche word and NGOs like using it, benchmark, benchmark, but learn from other people. Do you, are there peers in your industry who you can learn from? Understand your audience, what moves them, what ticks them, what would make them feel differently about my brand. So understand your audience. Don't just write just. You're not doing it just because understand who your audience is. Are you writing to funders? Are you writing to, to scientists? Are you writing to communicators? As I've done, I understood, I and I'm hoping I did, I knew who's going to be in this presentation. I knew that there are people who know how to tell stories, but they've never, they've never seen the other sides of how it can be done differently. So I have understood you as the audience and i'm giving you content and information and tips and pointers including the six pizza uh, pitch that i know will work for you so i have understood you as the audience and then improve your skill constantly learn new things invest in yourself uh, sign up for courses free paid for uh, invest in yourself improve your skill where i started in storytelling uh, 20 years ago and where i am right now as I told you, I'm just 33, by the way, just in case you're thinking I'm old. I've been telling stories throughout and I have improved my skill over the years. I have gone to school, I've studied communications, I, I, I've built other additional skills in, the, in that pipeline. So that when I, when I want to tell health stories, I know how to. If I want to tell uh, technology stories, I know how to. Improve your skill, be in such networks where people are learning, take up opportunities like this, sit, learn, follow up, you know, uh, get other people in the industry who are doing it and learn from them. That's the only way. But then again, don't be the person who takes, 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 takes. Also give, 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 give. I have been taking from other people over the years. Now I give, 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 because by giving, I'm also learning, you know, to refill my tank as well. So these are your pointers um, of how to be a comms person who's thinking about getting into storytelling, this will help you okay any questions anyone with a question because i'm actually at the very tail end of my presentation any questions that you might have uh -huh. uh, so i'm just looking at the charts traditional media still has its place we just need to know stakeholders and what appeals to them yes knowing your audience when it comes to communications and materials press release may just keep evolving true press release actually an example of, of the evolution of the press release, I don't know if you guys saw when the, when the queen was hospitalized, the, the royal, I mean, her office literally sent out a press release of just two sentences, two sentences. There was no background, there's no boilerplate that we all like, there was no contact us, it was just two sentences, the queen is unwell, her doctor is, is checking her out, you will be informed. And evolution of the press release, no longer a whole page, two sentences, and the, the whole thing was properly communicated. Mm -hmm. uh, does third party endorsement fit into storytelling? Uh, third party endorsement, it depends. Um, and you see this a lot with influencers, what you see brands now having influencers going in and they're selling their products and they're, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm now getting or I'm now using or I'm, I'm traveling with this and that travel insurance or whichever. 
third party endorsements work, but the, the, it's, it's really a balance. You do not want to look like you're overselling because then again, authenticity, you lose that because people will be like, oh, there are so many different kinds of influencers talking about your brand, but they might not necessarily say it in your voice. Can you say it yourself? With, or can you get other people to say it in a way that does not look like it's boastful? It's we know we are the best, but showing you know, the human experience, the vulnerabilities and, and, and the challenges that are there uh, in life. So third parties are good, but you have to be very careful whose voice is going to be used in that third party. And you don't want someone who today is doing your brand, tomorrow they're doing your competitors, or you know, they are they're doing conflicting kind of campaign, then it it beats the purpose because your audience sometimes is the same. So they'll say, but this person was in that other advert and they're now authentic in their storytelling. So uh, so that's also something to think about. Drama skits, yeah. I mean, again, you need to find a way. Uh, uh, is it uh, uh, is it school going kids? Is it funders? Is it you know who knowing what kind of storytelling platform you use is dependent on what do you want them to act? Would a skit work better than yeah? So they have to be as uh, as uh, Adedoin says. They have to be done testfully to fit the audience. Otherwise, you would leave a bit of test in people's mouths and they will, for sure, they will remember you, but they won't remember you as having made them, you know, moved in a different way. They will they'll definitely feel you played with their time. So, yeah, so drama is one of the best form of communicating, telling stories and nudging people. Skits give us the opportunity to send out messages in a fast, easy way. Yes, yeah, so do it testfully and it will work. Any other questions? Anyone else with any more questions? Just put them on the chat. So uh, happy if uh, guys can get in touch. Anyone who wants to follow up, uh, you want to share your skin to learn. Uh, as I've mentioned, I'm a writer, I'm a storyteller. I love telling stories. I love hunting and finding stories, uh, health communications and uh, social media space. Specialist, I tweet as a Eunice K. Kilonzo. So find me, tweet me, reach out. And uh, this is my email address. Uh, so this one is the one that is public facing. This one is for when I do presentation, speaking engagements. I, I will try and check it every day. So I'm always quite responsive on, on there. So reach out in case of any question, any ideas that you might have. Uh, happy to learn from you, happy to share thoughts and 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 just you know comments and, and links to useful resources. So all these slides I've put together, they are references which you can and for all the videos that I've I've uh, shared, uh, each of them has a link underneath them. So if you need anything, you can get that info. Uh, there. So I don't know if there's any other question. Just checking. I don't see any more questions, but I'm happy that your email and contact details are there. So if anybody has any more questions, please engage with Eunice. Um, Eunice, I want to say thank you very much. This has been really, really enlightening. Like I had so many mm -hmm. light bulb moments just listening to you. So um, everyone that's still on the call, please just, just appreciate Eunice um, for her time. We really thank you. And I see um, uh, Kat Long has gone ahead to put uh, LinkedIn details. So if you want to connect with other professionals on this call, you can please feel free as well to share your LinkedIn details. Um, just a bit of information before we close, where the comms avenue, for those who do not know, where a uh, mission-driven professional community with over 1,000 communications professionals from 20 African countries and what we do is capacity building and networking. So this webinar is one of the things that we do our programs. We also have our mentoring program and we have the community that is domiciled on Telegram where you can ask your fellow colleagues questions across the continent and we just engage and I'm sure after this we would also take the conversation further. So those of you that may be on the call that haven't yet joined, um, you're not a member, you would like to be part of the community, 
here's the the sign up link you can join we also have interesting events that we had one in in nairobi that was really really great that's how i really connected with eunice as well uh, we're having one this evening in abidjan um, so other hangouts will come so again it's just to build your network because like eunice said you know I, I really align with eunice when she said you know she learns you know every day from everyone and it's really by you know the people you meet so imagine you've connected with eunice you can rub minds share ideas and that's really what we're all about how can we support one another to be better in what we do to grow and to improve our skills so thank you so much eunice and we will have our next webinar in october however before then we already have eunice's permission will share the recording link as well as the slide so if you register via zoom and apologies to people some people had issues logging in zoom is quite interesting sometimes so we'll harvest all of the emails and then make sure that we send you the recording and the slides as well and then if you have further questions was to share uh -huh. before we go thank you thank you all very much um for the opportunity to share um i, I mean I, I have learned a great deal uh, in this journey of storytelling i have um, of course made my mistakes but more importantly i have learned from others i have you know i've, I've never been shy to put myself uh you know aside and say oh i can't do this i i always say yes and then I YouTube myself to lessons and learning. <laughs> and I, I don't say I can't do it. Uh, for my friends who've known me over the years, I always say, you know, say yes and learn. Say say yes. I never say no to yourself. You know, if you get an opportunity uh, to learn, to try out something different, something new, please do it. Uh, as a result of this, I mean, I've been able to, to work in different setups, different organizations, different, even with different people that I would ordinarily never have thought I would ever cross paths with. So I will tell you, please, as, as communicators, as storytellers, we never get to hear or people never get to appreciate our work uh, so much. But I will tell you, people are noticing, people are seeing. I'm sure some of the stories I've given examples of, you know, Lux and and uh, and uh, Pixar. Maybe nobody ever tells them that that's a good story, you know. And I see Botul say, Eunice, thanks for the shout out. You think nobody ever sees our reports, nobody ever sees our videos. People are watching, people are seeing, people are reading. Don't ever give up. <laughs> I know we hear this a lot, so just keep at it. Um, you know, if, if, if you're curious about how can I try this and you're not so sure, please reach out. You have my contact. I've put on the chat my link tree uh, account I, I might not be I may not solve all your problems but I might try to see how storytelling can can do just that for you uh, reach out um, share uh, I hope once once the link is available and, and the presentation is shared share with your network share with the organizations happy to jump on calls just to uh, brainstorm I love brainstorming about, around stories so don't ever hesitate to reach out um, yeah and and again we all have stories to tell. Stories are everywhere. Yeah, so truly grateful, thankful for all of you who, who've joined. Uh, I mean, I couldn't have spent my Friday evening any other way. And thank you so much uh, to the Coms Avenue for the opportunity for me to, to make this presentation. I don't take it for granted. No, we don't, we rarely get uh, enough platforms to tell our stories. So thank you for the opportunity uh, to let me share how to do storytelling as comes to people. So thank you very much. Amazing.